My name is Isaias Alvarado. I'm fighting for Bama USA at Bad Beat 20, June 10th at Commerce Casino. Uh, well, the last fight um, at February 20th was my birthday. Like uh, I was telling everyone, um, you know, I had my whole family come out this time. You know, I've been fighting for a while, and I've never had my family all at, at one fight all together. We've all we're we're kind of uh, we kind of go. Um, to the beat of our own drum, my family. So to have them all in, in one place at one time and seeing me do my thing was was pretty awesome. The the build up to the fight was uh was pretty crazy because there was a couple shows that I was supposed to fight for before, and uh, they kept getting pushed back. And then I started the training camp in October. So going that whole time and not stopping until February 20th, I was already run down. So the emotions of coming off of a loss. To come to that fight and then having my family there, you know, it, it was it was a it was a big buildup. But actually, at the event when I got there, it, it felt it couldn't be any more any more uh, perfect. It was a uh, it was a cool, calm, collective feeling. After uh, my last fight, I actually took some time off. I, I took time off from coaching. I took time off from the gym. I said, Hey, I don't I don't even want to think of a gym anymore. That didn't work. I was right back in the gym the next day helping out other fighters. We keep a busy schedule here at Dan Henderson's Athletic Fitness Center. You know, we always have guys on the roster. My my best friend and one of my closest training partners, Fernando Gonzalez, he was fighting right after me uh, two weeks later in, at Windstar Casino for Bellator MMA. So I couldn't stop. So I was right back in the gym. And, you know, it was probably a week or two after the after Fernando's fight where my body was like, hey, bro, we're going to take a chill pill. And, you know, I was, I was actually like forced. And I started to notice that my body was shutting down on me because little nagging injuries were popping up and different things like that. So uh, getting ready for April, uh, I actually it, it looked like it was going to be a short camp. But now the fight's getting pushed back to June. It was actually a blessing in disguise because it gave me time to to sit back and analyze things and actually prepare and get better as a mixed martial artist versus just going right into a fight camp. Uh, well, my focus for June 10th is just to, to show up a better version of what I showed up before. My last performance, uh, I actually said in a, in a post-fight interview that I really came out sloppy. I felt, I felt kind of flat, and I just felt that way because of the long, extensive training camp that I had. Uh, so this time, I just prepared just to be sharper, just to show up me you know whether I want to stay in the pocket stay at the distance take it to the ground or stand up I can go all ways I'm here with uh, Dan Henderson Fernando Gonzalez Sean Strickland Sam Alvey uh, Tom Galicchio I mean the list goes on and on you know um, I, can, I can be here all day naming training partners and I'm prepared for everything I've been here a long time and I've been in the game a long time and also coaching has uh, helped me focus just mostly on detail so that's the main focus for this fight is to make sure that I execute at what I want to do. Well, as a fighter, as a mixed martial artist, you know, it's no off season. You know, a lot of other sports, you have the off season, you have your season that you come, season that you go. But with mixed martial arts, a fighter has to prepare. I feel that as fighters, we make the mistake sometimes as preparing for one guy. We just have to become a better version of the last version of yesterday. And as long as we're doing that, as long as we're becoming better as fighters, we're prepared for anyone. But when we solely put a focus on a jiu-jitsu guy or guy from a Muay Thai background or a karate guy, once fighters get injured, which is, you know, very likely in this sport, and you have to be replaced, now your whole game plan's off, now everything is out the window, now your whole six weeks that you've been preparing for is out the window. So I feel that as mixed martial artists, you should just be prepared to go in there and fight and to be the best version that you can be. I've had, uh, for the February fight, it was supposed to be Tyler Smith. Uh, then it was going to be Eldon Sprott. Then it ended up being Garrick Evans. And he stepped up and he took it. Strong jiu-jitsu guy out of Robert Drysdale Gym. He was 10th planet down in San Diego. He, uh, he actually went for a heel hook during the fight. And it kind of threw me back but if I've only prepared for a stand-up guy my whole camp then I would have panicked in those situations but being with the beast that I'm with every day in this camp I'm prepared for anything now this time around June I have John Hernandez you know uh, kudos to him for stepping up and taking the fight and he comes from a good gym knuckleheads I, I believe they're out of Oxnard um, once again the opponent was supposed to be Tyler Smith 
So if I was getting ready for Tyler, which he should have took the fight, because this is the second or third time that he's pulled out upon me, now it's starting to piss me off a little bit. So if I was preparing for only Tyler, then I wouldn't be prepared for John Hernandez. And I believe in respecting all of my opponents. So if it's John Hernandez, if it's Tyler Smith, if it's Gandhi, it doesn't matter. If he's across from me, my only job is to make sure that that guy has no chance. And I come from a hard knock family. So it's like, there's no softies in my house. All of my brothers, we, they, uh, they boxed amateur. They played professional sports. So they could critique me the most. I thought that my critique was bad when I said, hey, I felt a little sloppy, I felt a little flat. As Soon as I came out, my dad was like, ah, you're not standing in the pocket, you didn't, you didn't work behind your jab. So no, I don't, I, don't, I don't come from that cloth. I don't come from the cloth of uh, uh, honoring piss poor performances. It's like either you go out there and you have a job to do and you do it well, or you don't do it at all. Okay, so everyone was happy with the victory. Everyone, I mean, my, my, my family supports me from, from sun up to sundown. That's what families do. And they're very happy my mom was there. She's glad I didn't get hurt. But also she asked me, hey, why didn't you stick behind your hooks? Why didn't you stick behind your jabs? What's going on with you? You know, so the, the love that I get from my family is uh, bittersweet and it's hard not. But I'm from Detroit, so that's the way I was raised. I'm back, to nor I'm back to normal routine. The only thing that I can see that gets in my way uh, with this fight is if, uh, is if I uh, just don't show up. And what I mean by that is you have, to, you have to know when to push and when to pull back. And too often, as fighters or as ambitious men and women in the sport, we tend to think that more is better and sometimes less, less is better. So you have to listen to your body, you have to listen to your mind, and the only obstacle that I can see getting in my way is myself. Well, uh, Ed Hyman was supposed to fight Blake True, but now uh, one of our other teammates is stepping up for Ed Hyman, and it's Chris Reyes. And this uh, guy, he's uh, from Pomona, California. He's uh, one of the guys that came in and you know didn't know anyone from Adam, but he comes in and he shows up every day. He puts in hard work, and he's a student of the game. He wants to learn more. He, he asks questions. And for a lot of people, they, 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 they want to be mixed martial artists, but they're not willing to sacrifice. But anything you tell this kid to do, he's willing to do. And he's one of the guys that, as a veteran in Muay Thai myself as well, he's one of the most avoided guys in the room. And I mean, that's from Dan on down. That's everyone here. We give everyone respect, but it's some people who demand respect. And that's one thing that I can say about Chris is that you may not respect them off, off rip, but at the end of five minutes, you're definitely going to know his name. I just want to shout out all of my sponsors, all of my family. Uh, number one, like I say, sponsor Heritage Tattoo. All day, every day. Those guys have been with me from the jump. And I will continue to support them in their careers and whatever they choose to do. I want to thank Dan Henderson's Athletic Fitness Center and Team Quest. All of my teammates for helping me prepare and get ready. I want to thank uh, a, a real close friend of mine. Uh, we call him Mr. French. His name is Frank Semini. And uh, he's been the, the man in the background for many of our careers, from Fernando, myself, Chris Rea, uh, Dan, everyone. He's been that voice in the background, whether it's holding pads, whether it's whatever. You know, he's, a, he's a, definitely a, a, a good man, and I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for him as well. Um, Corey Grant, Ricardo Feliciano, I mean, th the list goes on and on. I've been blessed to have great people in my life. So I want to thank my number one sponsor, which is God. So uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. And uh, other than that, just check me out June 10th. What the fans can expect from me on June 10th is fireworks. The last time I predicted that I was going to go out and, and execute a game plan, and I didn't. But as a striker myself, I've also proven that I can wrestle. I can defend submissions. I can go for submissions if I feel like. I'm prepared anywhere the fight goes and what the fans can expect is for them to get their asses out of them seats.